Okay, well, welcome to the debate between Empty Without Brain and Tick Shade. I am the Kitch 2. I will be simply moderating the debate, uh, which will surely will be a great event. And afterwards, we will be having an after show, so please do stick around for that. Um, the debate will consist of uh, an opening, an opening uh, remarks for five minutes and then three five minute rounds for every bottles and then the rest will be a back and forth and maybe some questions from the audience um, but I'm not too sure but I uh, will I'm not sure how who who is to I'm going for this day Kitch. Kitch I'm going for this okay uh, so just, just let me just get my timer ready and uh, yeah, we'll start today now so oh, yeah. To begin with, I think it's best to define free will. Freedom means you have the ability of options to choose from, and will basically means you can act voluntarily on the situation to influence the results. My opponent tonight needs to justify why his God, despite the fact he can prevent horrific events from happening, down to the cause of rapists, serial killers, pedophiles, and more people, however, chooses not to. His specific God is in control of everything, and is able to determine certain events and knows the outcome already before he makes his judgment. So, what is the point? Are we here for his entertainment? My main point tonight is if his God is, is omniscient and exists, free will isn't free to us, but only to him, because of his ability to control everything we do. In order for there to be free will, he would have to concede that his God is not in control of a person's actions and isn't omniscient. Pass me down for them. Okay, I'm just resetting the time. Um, there has to be a better way to do this. <laughs> okay, so Tick says you want to do your opening remarks now? Yeah, sure. Uh, now, that was short. But anyway, thank you for uh, for your invitation. Uh, my opponent, uh, Inti, has been stressing this free will, and I'm sure a lot of people have same uh, similar uh, questions. The uh, what is free will? We gotta ask first. You know, is God controlling your free will? Is God obstructing your free will? Is God uh, constraining your free will? Is God affecting your free will? All should be yes to these questions in order for anyone to claim with God there cannot be free will. If your free will is towards God, is it not your free will? If your will is not towards God, does it mean you have no free will? And I know some people won't like it, but I'll quote something from the scripture. Uh, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, before we discuss what is God, you know, according to the Bible, it says the, it's a God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, that's John 4.24. And also, in John fourteen six, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, there are a few things that we need to, like, discuss. You know, first of all, such as, what is the truth? You know, and I will assert that what Jesus Christ said and done and will be done is the truth. And secondly, what is knowing the truth? What does that mean? You know, and I, w I will assert that finding objectivity is the truth, towards the truth. Understanding, of course, the truth also is truth. Thirdly, what is uh, make free mean, uh, as in the scripture? What is the difference between set free and make free? And when, when you are set free, you are simply set free. You know, a lot of, you know, other 
Bible translations, uh, they say it's just set free. But when you're set free, you, you're just, again, ready to be gathered again and, as slaves or whatever. But when you are made free, you are truly free. You are a new being. Therefore, as in uh, Corinthians, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, the empty has uh, his main argument is, you know, God is letting all this atrocity and all pain and suffering. Therefore, we don't have free will. You know, suffering is there for us to do something about. And I know it can be a little mean, but God is being patient. He suffers as we suffer as well. But He is patient. And, and that is for us to, uh, to make decision towards God, using our free will, to do something about all this pain and suffering. That's it. Okay, so MT, I want you to. Is it your next? It's your, just a moment, please. I'm just going to reset the time. Okay. And uh, yeah, five minutes. Uh, five minute rebuttal, and your time starts now. Okay. It's still to. My opponent has still to acknowledge the fact that his God is in control of everything and is able to know what happens. So there is simply no point for him to be in control since. He already knows what's going to happen and what's the outcome of the actual action we do. He has just been quoting the Bible, which is irrelevant to the questions I've raised. But just to set the Bible scripture straight, uh, Dr. Francesco Stavaka Pola uh, is a Bible scholar from the University of Exeter and says the Bible isn't historically accurate. She says the ancient writers had a very different understanding of what is fact and fiction compared to now. And she believes it wasn't meant to be a literal, factual book of history, as many people portray it, as my opponent, Fixes, has just done. She finishes by, by saying how there is very little that is factual. So the question of God's existence is certainly in, in order by them. So the, and the Bible isn't relevant to the question. It's to determine whether... Uh, God gives us free will, and if he is in control of everything, then he just simply cannot exist. He has acknowledged the, fact, the question that I raised regarding if there is a God, then where he is in control of every outcome of every single event, then free will simply doesn't exist to us, but only to him. He says suffering, like for instance the events that I mentioned with rapists, pedophiles, serial killers and all that, is a part of his wonderful plan. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I don't want any part of his plan. I don't want to be in it, I don't want to be even associated with his God if the results are as negative as that. That's me, John Kitch. Okay, I'm just going to restart the time. Oh, uh, oh for a second, I forgot to mute, uh, forgot to mute myself. Um... Uh -huh. Well, uh, so, uh, Tix Hayes, I'm going to invite you to, to your five-minute rebuttal for this round, and your time starts now. Right, so, the same thing, I'm, you know, going back to the same questions that I made in the beginning. Uh, is God control, controlling your uh, free will? Omnipresence, omniscience, all that. Controlling everything doesn't mean God is controlling your free will, okay? And... When you are talking about all these sufferings and atrocity, as I said, it's not God causing that. Partially, it is us, you know, with all the other things. Who raped the kid? Uh, did God allow it? May or may not. We got to ask him later on. Why did you let that kind of things happen? You know, uh, we never know that kind of answer to that kind of suffering. Now, is that is that because God is not able to answer or is that because we are not able to understand and empty has, has mentioned about Bible being kind of fable or fiction or non-historical I, I cannot disagree more than you know, more I mean you know a lot of uh, 
countries, for example, even now, have been taught, have been teaching the Bible as a historical uh, textbook as well. Is it fictional? Well, it may be, may not. It may be, it may be like Harry Potter, Potter, if you don't know what's in the Bible. But just because, like, let's say you write uh, a non-fiction book about your dad, would it or he become untrue, like 2,000 years later, you know? And I know that you can say, like, oh, well, what about other fictions, you know? Well, that's another matter. That's an, that's an ability to tell what is real or what is not. And, and, and besides, when we, talk in, when we talk about the truth uh, itself, that's where free is. Of course, free will is not free. We are given with, a free, with free will to make a choice towards what's godly and what's not. You see someone suffering, what are you going to do about it? Using your free will, you make a decision. And, and you can say, like, hey, you know, God is looking at this baby in pain, and every single event, uh, you know, he's letting it happen. Well, how do we know he's letting it happen? You know, just because it's happening, he's letting it? That's not logical. All for all I know, uh, it happened already. Whatever is going to, ha going to happen in God's time, uh, it's happened already. I mean, that kind of uh, uh, consideration can be taken place. But in any case, suffering is not a part of His plan. It never was, you know. So, for him to assert to uh, saying that you know God is letting all this happen, therefore no free will. No. Maybe God is letting this happen so that we can do something about it to make to make certain choices using our free will to make the better world better to help others. You know, that would be my uh, that would be my understanding. And in, in order to do that, you have to stand firm in in in, in the truth in what is true. It's not about uh, when people are in suffering. You know, it's not about who is right or wrong. It is about what is true, or false, or not true. And when we know what is true, then we are truly free. Unless we don't know what is true, we cannot be free. Our mind cannot be free. We will be uh, gripped, and we are not able to digest uh, certain uh, truth even. And we are blinded sometimes uh, because of, of a lot of atrocities, so to say, worldly things, that we are not able to be free, nor would be, are we able to uh, act like an actual free being using our free will. Thank you. Okay, uh, yes, so I'm going to invite MT to, uh, once I get this timer back up, to do his uh, second round rebuttal for five minutes. Uh, you may begin now, I suppose. Okay, my opponent has just conceded that his God isn't omniscient and isn't in control of our actions, but apparently knows the result to make his judgment. So we are not free because he is still in control of certain events. If God is responsible for suffering, for poverty, and letting it happen, why is it a part of his plan? Because, uh, of course, it's, if he's in control of it, it's certainly part of his plan. So, for instance, if I'm responsible for a certain event, and I'm in control of it, it is certainly part of my plan. So it's the same with God. If he is in control of absolutely everything, and is apparently omniscient, as but as is being portrayed by many creationists, then it's certainly part of his plan. Suffering is about suffering, not truth. Suffering is about people in dying, poverty, in poverty, and terrible, awful things happening. So, how is that a part of God's wonderful truth? Why is that necessary? And to begin with, the Bible is pure fiction. It is based on past stories, uh, based from other religions previously. For instance, in the Sumerian culture, and 
in Greek mythologies. Oh, it's based on absolute shed loads of crap from bloody Jewish faith and many religions based on before it. In particular, the Adam and Eve story is based on the Sumerian uh, beginnings and everything that is in that storyline. But there, it's unbelievable how people still portray it as fact when, when you just read half the book, you just think, what the flying fuck is going on but here? So, to, su- to suggest that his God even exists, let alone the fact that he's in control of everything, is ridiculous. And, again, if he is in control of everything, free will cannot exist. Thank you. I'm done. Okay, Grant, uh, I'm just going to... Uh, uh, God damn it. I should really pick the better uh, way of monitoring time. Oh, well. So, I'm going to invite Tick Shade to uh, his second round five-minute rebuttal now. Uh, You can begin now. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, Let me just, uh, you know, clarify a couple of things. Firstly, I never said that uh, God is letting it happen. I said maybe, and that's something we've got to ask. But if he does... Then he's then that means he's patient. You know, when we are patient, you know, we tend to overlook a lot of things. But that doesn't mean that we are actually ignoring them. Uh, why is suffering necessary? It is because. Uh, let me give you an example. All right. A lot of times in American society, I know you guys in England. The uh, one of the things that I have observed that is quite. You know, that, that, that quite bothers me is that they, they have this winner mentality. Everyone is a winner. Win, win, win. You know, never fail. But how can you be a winner with, without failure? You know, how can you know uh, what, you know, what's going to come about without any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, systematic failure in, in many cases? Suffering is the same thing. Suffering is necessary. Uh, I know it can be harsh for some people and for the people who are suffering. I, I suffer from the same thing. You know, when we talk about suffering, you know, it's not just about physical thing, is it? So we all have this suffering, but based on different sufferings, we are the one making choices using our free will to do something about those sufferings. Okay, so as I said, you see a baby suffering, do something about it. If you can't, you can't. You see someone is is being is is poor and hungry, do something about it. You know, that's what we are here for. And Indians keep on asserting that the Bible is based on past stories or whatever. Well, you know what? So are many other literatures, but that doesn't mean the Bible is from those. Uh, mythology and all that and without giving any specific examples for example you know empty is just appealing to his own ignorance that's that is not a way to do it you cannot just assert you gotta base your opinion on certain things is that based on mythology how so how is that affected to the bible does it make is it does it make up whole bible you know and and um, but anyway, that's irrelevant anyway. The what's relevant is the topic what we are talking about about the free will. M- my assertion is that we use our free will that to uh, to help others and to do something about so that we can succeed, become perfect, just like Christ, become perfect in Christ. That's what free will is for. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is the last round, so I'm going to invite MT to do his final five minute rebuttal before all hell breaks loose. <laughs> uh, so you can begin uh, now. Right. My opponent, Six Shades, said maybe. He is maybe letting it happen, suggesting he his God isn't omniscient and isn't uh, responsible for certain things, which is entirely different compared to the actual Bible and how it portrays it. 
to no understanding of suffering compared to some. For instance, in third world countries where people are dying and suffering of uh, different causes like poverty and many diseases that can affect our lives. But we are simply not in control. God should, in hindsight, know that we are not, but that we cannot do certain things in order of, of this free will that He has apparently given us. And for, for, in the example of thick shades, why is God making a child suffer purely for us to do something about it? Why can't He do something about it? What does He need us for? Why do we need to do it if He can do it? Why, why can't he just make things a little bit easier for us when we have to put, go through so much shit? For example, as you may have seen in my videos, I, I, have, I had cancer as a kid. So I would love to hear God's plan regarding why the fuck he gave me fucking cancer. And of course, why the hell has he given everyone, like, for instance, in the third world countries, met all these diseases like AIDS, malaria, as uh, all of them mentioned, and... What the fuck is he doing? This isn't free will. This is just pure entertainment on his part, but hell on ours. And he's suggesting that if we don't obey him and accept truth of Jesus Christ, then we're going to hell. When in hindsight, for some, hell is already here. How the fuck could it get worse for people in, in countries like Africa, China, and malaria? And he's suggesting suffering, he understands it, but compared to some, he doesn't know it. So he's talking out disaster there. And so that's basically it for me. That's one of my questions. If God is in charge, is incapable, and uh, wants us to do things, uh, for instance, like help children, why can't God do it? He was quite happy. Uh, killing people and everything, so why can't he prevent certain events from happening? Okay, um, so this is the last five minute where I'm going to hand it to Tick Shades. Uh, you can begin uh, now. Well, you know, if he were to let things happen, and it seems like, apparently, it, it seems like he's letting it happen. Now, I said, if he were to actually let things happen, that then it shows his patience. It doesn't show his maliciousness. Now, uh, if you cannot help others, uh, well, you know, that's your choice again. Why baby suffer? Uh, you know, can God make anything easier for others? Well, he could, based on what? You know, some might say, hey, that's easier. Some might say, hey, that's not easier at all. But we all agree that baby suffering, we don't like that. Well, how can I say other than to show the glory of God? For example, let's say the book, Baby Suffer, and then, and I've heard many stories, and then uh, overcame the suffering, and then became uh, the glory to glory uh, and to do to help similar situation uh, uh, with others, that's glorifying God. Let's say you suffer from some kind of atrocity, or let's say you have uh, uh, some kind of uh, you know not just physically but mentally. Let's say you have some forms of traumatic experience. Well, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to just kind of excuse yourself and blame and accuse? You know, I've seen a lot more people doing something about that particular situation and using that to help others. You know, it's not about, it's not entertainment. If you're going to talk about you know, this entertainment for God, well, you know, <laughs> what happened to Satan? Is he just sitting there? You know, then if you're going to hate God, you know, hate Satan. <laughs> All these atrocities and suffering, it's not uh, due to God. It's due to us, okay? And one of the, uh, also a lot of uh, misdoctrination, uh, wrong doctrination is called, if you don't believe, you're going to go to hell for eternity and be tormented. You know, that's, that's not biblical. You, know, you are damned, <laughs> but that doesn't mean you will leave, you, you get to live in, in hell, you know? Uh, so... A lot of times when people have hatred 
towards God or whatever. I noticed that they do that because out of fear, out of doubt, and out of certain ignorance on, the, on their part. Uh, when I say ignorance, I'm not saying they're ignorant. I'm talking about the lack of knowledge. And, uh, you know, why is God not capable? Well, that, again, we cannot say as well. Based on what? Compared to what? So, uh, uh, what we need to do is uh, to figure out what the intention of God is. And it's not something God cannot do. And believe me, all the, all the injustice in the world, all the suffering will be end in, in one day. And it's not something God cannot do. Before that, we got to do something about it. Okay? But anyway, uh, what? The block TV is gone? <laughs> what happened? Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, so that's my point. Are we back on? Not sure yet, but uh, I'll stop the timer if you want to catch up wherever, 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 wherever we got cut off and we get back on. Yeah. I'll have a check now. I don't know when this ended, but uh, I mean, basically my point is that uh, uh, God is uh, God is not letting uh, others suffer as much as we don't want them to suffer. But Sorry, could you repeat that? Could you repeat that? Oh, I said, as much as you don't want others to suffer, God doesn't want us to suffer either. And the, uh, and the reason why we have suffering and other things, even starting from us, starting from yourself, starting from myself, it is our choice what we are going to do about this particular suffering. Suffering is not just about the babies or, or someone being killed or physically being in pain. Anyone, everyone in this world living has their own, uh, his own suffering. And what you're going to do about it, uh, uh, whether you're going to make a choice towards God or not, is your choice. And that in itself is also free will. A machine cannot make that kind of choice because it's, it is not granted with free will. Free will is not ours. Free will is not free. I agree with that, with Indy, on that point. It is not free because during our lifetime, we are granted with free will to use to make certain choices towards God. So, what is your choice going to be? Are you going to be keep on blaming, just like Adam and Eve, and accusing others? Or, are you going to do something about it? Thank you. Okay, so that is the end of the back and forth. I'd like to thank both of our competitors. Oops, sorry, time has gone off. Yeah, so um, I'll open it up to our next, the next part of the debate, which is the, uh, I believe it's the questions section, if I've been informed rightly. Yeah. So I'll just go back up the chat. I uh, had uh, one from Oliver Scott. This is the tick shade. Um, what if we get an area? When do when you have that your mind can completely change, and you do things you do you'd not otherwise do. It's just up at just a little bit up the chat at seven thirty eight. I'll just repeat that again. What if we get malaria? When do you have that your mind can completely change and you'd do things you'd not otherwise do? Oh, you mean like uh, when somebody's out of his mind? What is he going to do? Is that, is that your question? Uh, I believe the question is, if you get, when you get, when you, if you get something like malaria, would you, uh, your mind change, would you, when you, would your mind completely change and you do things you wouldn't otherwise do? If that's what we got out there. I think he's lined up in the car, so I'll probably get him to ask you that himself. Oh. Uh, he's going to be coming in soon, so he's pub published a better off rating, so, uh, so, so I won't be, I thought I probably, I probably fucked up the, uh, saying that question, so I'll wait until the, 
He gets in. To the call. Um, well, kinda, it was a, a breaking out here and there. I couldn't really uh, fully hear, but from what I understand is like, uh, uh, what do you do with the people who are not uh, inclined to have free will? Is that what you? Is that what your question is? Hello? 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 Yeah, I'm on. Okay. The malaria question was just to drive home the fact that we are subject to conditions. So I was just wondering if we're subject to conditions. Let's say you get whacked over the head and concussed and you sort of stumble around and you can't think properly. What's happening to free will there? Would you suggest, do you say that it's being cut up or would you say the free will that we can tap into is being limited? Well, for him, it's probably limited, but you must understand uh, when you make a choice using your free will, uh, what you are basing on is your heart. So let's say this guy has has no memory or has has no free will. Uh, I think God will look at his heart, and for us, uh, our free will should be. Uh, to help them as much as possible, making choice towards that. Gosh, uh, I don't even know what to say, really. Um, free will is made with our heart, but when our brains get affected, our abilities to, well, to choose seem to get affected. Uh, if you get drunk and your frontal lobe swells up, then um, you do inexplicable things that you'd never do in a normal state of mind. Okay, in that instance, you might say, oh, but before that, you made the choice to drink. But in instances, let's say, if you get hit on the head, uh, or if you get malaria, people who get malaria, um, as an example, someone, I had an account where someone got malaria, and then changed their mind completely changed, and they were ready to go and run their friends over, because they suddenly came under the impression that their friends were conspiring against them. Uh, and so they attempted to actually run them over with a car. Now, now would you actually, would you really suggest that there was a free will made? Was the heart there, or would you say that the brain was troubled and thus the person acted in a troubled way? Well, are, are you asking me or, or, or Inti? Well, anyone who's a, this notion of free will, that we can, we can somehow, you know, um, go against the laws of physics. Well, you know, and if you guys have seen a movie called Memento, uh, this guy just remember like on, only a few minutes ago kind of thing movie, You've seen that, right? Uh, if you, I haven't actually. Oh, okay. I, I really like that movie. <laughs> uh, this guy only can't remember just a few minutes ago. <laughs> uh, so what, what, what about those guys? But when you really look at the film in the movie, even if he acts momentous, momentarily in that moment, and he only has like few minutes of his life every time, and he doesn't even remember just what happened, Every time he does something, uh, it's based on his free will, so to say. But what kind of actions come about? Is he is his is his actions towards uh, helping others, for example, or is his action towards helping himself, or is his action towards God? Uh, I mean. When I say heart, uh, I think I meant to say how your basic uh, ground, how you are uh, made uh, to begin with. So if the character in the movie, if he had a good heart, so to say, then he might have made uh, a better decision uh, rather than trying to like kill somebody that... Uh, he thinks that he, 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 you know, that somebody did something to him and things. So, uh, was he a, love, a lovely person before, you know, that happened to him? Well, maybe or maybe not. But as far as I'm concerned, and someone got uh, brain damage and, and do certain things, I mean, that's, can we not have that, have a, com a compassion towards him and, 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 and know that, He's not what he is, what he is, and wouldn't God know that too? 
It's not God made him, you know, get into an accident and get his brain damaged. But I think what I'm saying is, God will know what he is. Well, it sounds like you even can see somewhat that we can't really help how we are in time now. We can't help what choices we make, because you even said how we're made. We're going to do something depending on how we're made. Right. That's a good question. So what, how we are made is made already. All right. In that sense, yes. But still, that doesn't mean that he's in control of our free will. Yes, he's in control of everything and anything. But as far as free will is concerned, just like the same thing in Adam and Eve, he could have just intervene. Hey, 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 wait a minute, guys. I told you, man. I told you not to even touch it. Don't look at it and eat it. He could have just intervened. But why did he let it? We could say. He let things happen. That's because he wants us to choose him. Not like a robot or something. Not like a little kid or anything. And then again, when Adam and Eve did that, when God actually confronted them, you know, actually they were hiding, right? They were hiding from God. Why would they hide? And if they had some, if they made a wrong choice using their own free will, all they could do is say, "Hey, you know what? I messed up. I messed up. All right, let's let's forget about all this. Forgive me. Let's forget about. It. You know what? That would be better." But what did they do? I mean, God asked them, "Where are you?" I mean. Did he ask that because he didn't know where they are? He knew where they are. All right. He knew exactly what's going on. That's how he, how patient he is. Right. It's the same thing. We are hiding, and what we have done, we are accusing and blaming God. You know. So it's been like that throughout the history, and unless we learn to. Uh, use our free will correctly and truly, this uh, so-called atrocity and this uh, entropy, so, so to say, will continue. So it's, it's our choice what we're going to do Six about mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Uh, during your discussion with Oliver, you just said suffering is due to the bad hearts. So the people suffering in third world countries is due to them having bad hearts, despite the fact that God is responsible for all their actions. Because you just said God is apparently not in control of you, our will, but is in control of everything. So he's in control of certain events that happen in our lives that can influence uh, what we do. And he already knows the outcome of the events. So... No, it's not about like, God controlling everything, therefore he knows the outcome of everything. Just because you can control everything, that doesn't mean that you can or you should, all right? And just like, you know, you have uh, certain things, uh, let's say you are babysitting, all right? There are certain things you allow and certain things that you disallow. And sometimes uh, you let things happen, okay? Where are you going to draw the line? Some kids may say, hey, you know, stop this. Or some uh, kid may say, hey, not now, stop later. I mean, you know, that's quite subjective. So what I'm saying is, what is the intention of God? we got to look into that. What was the intention of the tree, the, 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 the tree of knowledge of good and evil? What was the intention of God asking Adam and Eve uh, uh, where they, they were? You know, it's not to damn us, it's not to like punish us, it is for, it's to, it is for I, us to use our free will to make a choice. Right. You just said he, he, he has control of everything, but it doesn't mean that he is in, in, in control of no, everything. No, I said so I, he's, in, he's in control, but that doesn't mean that that uh, that he he should be in control or or or, he, or we think that that, uh, uh, that everything should be taken care of. You can, you can let things happen, all right? But whether, whether God let things, certain things happen, it's not for us to decide. For, because it's quite subjective. Whatever reason may be out there, I may disagree with you, okay? So... What God wants is 
when hello hello can you hear me yes I, yes uh yeah you still oh, I thought I got in heard I thought I could just still on <laughs> all right so so it's not like God cannot control certain things all right it's it is something that we need to do you know using our free will Otherwise, you know, it's better for us to be robots or machines without any free will. You know, I mean, would you like that? I don't. Sorry, can you repeat that? I mean, I said, would you like to be robots or, or machines without free will? I mean, would you like that? I said. Well, if he's in control of everything, then aren't we well under his control? So, like machines, we control it, and he can control us. So, technically, free will doesn't exist. Well, why, uh, why are you introducing the, the word called control? Well, because he is in control of our free will and what we do. So, therefore, free will can't exist. When you, when you, yeah, okay, well, when you babysit the kids, do you control the kids? Is that the only method yep. that you do? I disagree. I disagree. When I babysit, Sorry, when I babysit kids, for example, controlling is not the only option. You're not in control in what they do and what they, you know the outcome of certain results. You're making an accurate guess. And you uh, for instance, uh, when some when your child does something bad, you would punish them and it's still they were doing it and understanding the consequence. God is in control of what we do and everything that uh, that everything that is. So uh, the parent, uh, the analogy isn't valid. Oh, so you're, you're not, okay. So you're in, you're talking uh, in terms of maintenance. Sorry. No, God is in control of our actions and everything. The parent isn't. The analogy is invalid. That's what I'm saying. Okay, well, let's say he's in control of, uh, of everything that we do. Well, then, if you know that, then what are you going to do about it? Well, don't you want to make a choice towards God or, or something bad? Sorry, I mean, what? If you know, let's say, let's say, According to your logic, let's say God is in control, total control, all right? And if you know that, then what are you going to do about it? Are you going well, to... Well, I can't do anything. Well... I can't do anything about it because God is in control. You, so it be down to win. So are you, are you going to do something about it or not going to do about it? It's not like God is, you can. God is you responsible are, for what I do. Right, so Therefore, you are doing it already. No so you are doing it already. What? You are doing it already, right? You, are, you have made a ch choice to debate me. You made a choice to, to talk against God, so to say. So you made that certain choice, right? It's not like God is like giving you this kind of telepathic uh, communication with you. Hey, you know, blasphemy, blasphemy. <laughs> He's not saying that, right? You made a choice, didn't you? Appreciate. This is where we're detaining the idea that your God exists, your specific God. Never mind the fact that whether you know whether he actually exists. So the fact that, well, this is assuming again that he's omniscient, is in control of everything, and is uh, as he's put the Bible, which is completely redundant because God. Your God simply, there's no evidence that he does exist. And you keep referring to the Bible as if it is an actual, actual story. When I did refer you to okay. a Bible story, I, I'm sorry to who, did, who did say that the Bible, <laughs> you keep going back to the Bible. is a literal form of his story. <laughs> Why do you keep going back to the Bible, indeed? It's irrelevant. Let's say you somehow miraculously that you disapprove the Bible, all right? Does that mean God disappears? It's irrelevant. The guy said we're offline. <laughs> so stick to the subject. I mean, I could like uh, I could give you my argument why the Bible is valid, but that's not the topic. And as I said, let's say by some miraculous reason you disapprove the Bible, that doesn't mean God disappears. So stick to a, a, a topic that is free will. I questioned you: Is God controlling your free will? If God is controlling your free will, then why are you here, bless me or debating with me? Is God obstructing your free will? If He's obstruct, obstructing your free will, again, why are you here? Is God constraining your free will? Then again, <laughs> you know, you made a choice to be here. Alright? That is your free will. 
I'm talking about that sort of choice. Are you going to make a choice towards God or not? It's up to you, MD. We're offline. We can stop the mic. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just talking. That you know, I think the debate is done. But you know, whatever, whatever you can continue, whatever. But that's fine. I'm just talking on Skype as long as I'm on it. So you know, that's my two cents, and. You know what? My bottom line, you know, as I said, whatever is there is 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 it has certain purpose. It has a it has a reason. Whether it's success, whether it's failure, whatever. Okay. So even with success, let's say I give you a a a, a, a better shade. example. We've been told to hold, Josh. What was that? Get on the. Oh, I didn't read, read that. Sorry. The text. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so we have a caller. Where? Uh, what's the caller's name again? Just scroll on up. Oh, Captain Holmes. Uh, back on. <clears throat> back on line as far as I can tell. Uh, if anyone, if if if, uh, <laughs> uh, if could people hear us? Uh, could you give us a thumbs up? <laughs> a thumbs up if you can hear us. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I, I think that's the uh, confirmation that we're back online, so uh, there we be. Yeah. Cal, do you want to uh, ask the question? Hey, uh, yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yes. we can hear uh, you. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted some, give some clarification from uh, Stitch Age, really, um, so I can understand where he's coming from. If I get this right, do you do you believe the Bible is literal, is a historical account, is the word of God? Oh, I, it was breaking up, but the, let me just repeat. Uh, you're asking if the Bible is, if I believe in the Bible literally? No, I'm asking if you believe that the Bible is a literal account. Whether it's factual, whether it's in the historical document, and whether what, I'm sorry, what is in the what is a literal account? The Bible. The Bible. Is it, is it, is it all true? Oh. Was there no Was there really Adam and Eve? Oh, Adam and Eve and other things, story like that, and uh, Noah's and all that. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and um, what, what's your basis for believing that? Well, you know, um, if you are asking for a certain, uh, like, solid evidence or something that you could actually of see. Not. Of course I'm not asking for that because I know I'd right. never so get that. I can, oh, I, oh, right. Why you believe it. right, I can only give you uh, the uh, analogical statement and that is like when I asked Inti, like let's say you were to write a non-fiction about your dad, is that mean? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's a really simple question and it really is a yes or no answer I'm looking for. I said, Do you believe yes or right? Bible is I said yes or right. Yeah, okay, okay, I didn't hear you, sorry. So, if we're talking about free will, you're going to, you brought Adam and Eve, so that's where, that's where everything originated from, okay? So, Adam and Eve is a literal account. It explains to me exactly what happened then. How, how, what, the game was free will? He gave, he, he, what exactly happened then? Right, so just like uh, we have choices in the world, you know, there are a lot of things that uh, when we come across with certain issues, and uh, there are solutions, and not just one. Maybe there is just one solution for some uh, some some things. That usually there are more than one solution. 
and that is the same thing with uh, with the tree of 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 of, of knowledge of, of good and evil. It is there. It is your choice. Okay. So it is your choice to uh, pick it and eat it, whatever. It's your choice. And There are a lot of static. I cannot really understand. But what I'd like to clarify, it's not snake. I know it's, it has it's the same connotation meaning, but it's a, it's, it's a, serp, it's a serpent. Uh, but um, what about serpent? I I, I don't know, maybe no, it's better to type. I cannot really hear because of static. Sorry. I, okay, maybe if I try and speak a bit louder, you might hear me. God put the serpent in the Garden of Eden, knowing exactly what the consequences would be. So he set everything up. How is that giving man free will? Well, so we can make a choice to reject the serpent or not. It's our choice. If God's all knowing, and he knows the outcome of what's going to happen, then he set it up. Exactly. Yes. Well, you know, if he set it up, then he set it up. Then why, you know, he said already, he, he gave the uh, the bottom line rule, right? don't eat it. You know, then don't. <laughs> why Why would they do that? Knowing what would happen to them. Because he... Why did God die for them? Why did God say, if you eat of the apple, you should surely die? Right. That's what, that's what, he, but that's what he said. And then and they, they listened to the serpent saying that, you know you will live forever, which is a lie, <laughs> you know. So, they made a choice to listen to something else other than God. And God knew all that, and, and therefore, you know... God okay, so you realize the natural extension of that is that God is responsible and created all the evil in the world. Man, yeah. man, with man is the only creature that God gave free will, free will to. Right, God... So he, God is... It, but rebelled, oh, right, against, right. rebelled against God because of that. So, God created evil put evil in motion in the world. Would you agree with that? Yeah, God created evil. So, what does that mean? Does that mean God is evil? Just because you created a car, does that mean you're a car? No, it does. If he's responsible for, the, for creating evil and unleashing evil, evil in the world right. and all the suffering that comes of that, then I think of the conclusion of that is that yeah, he is evil, if he existed. Let's say, exactly. let's say you painted some painting, okay, and nobody buys it. Whose fault is it? Painters. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All you have to do is okay. that, as I said to Inti, if you know that, if you know that God has done that, then what what is your choice going to be? You know. So we don't have any choice then. So no. so we don't have any, if we said it, we don't have any choice then. So we. Exactly. So, no, you have a choice. You, you have a choice between good any and evil. Evidence, you have a choice between good and evil. Accept any evidence that contradicts your belief that Adam and Eve really existed six that five six thousand years ago, whenever it was. Is there anything that could be brought to the table that you look at and say, okay, maybe maybe Adam and Eve didn't happen. It's just a story. No, I don't have their fossils. I don't have their uh, tombs or anything, and I don't have. Any of those of your ancestors either? Why How's that relevant? Fossils? I thought if the world was six thousand years, God put fossils there to test faith. So why would you? Why would you even? Why would you even argue with a scientific point of view? A scientific right. point of view? Who said it's scientific? What is scientific? Fossils. Fossils. The fossils, are, the fossils are being used okay. as one okay, ex evidence. Explain to me God's how fossils are scientific. <laughs> Do you know how fossils came about in the, uh, uh, anyway, do you, do you know how fossils are made? Breaking out. I, 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 I'm going I'm going to, I'm going to draw from the call because I, I just wanted to get clarification on your point of view. And from everything, everything you've said to me, there's no point that in you because nothing that can be said will shift you from your point of view. Which yeah. isn't based on evidence. It isn't based on logic. It, it, it's based on whatever social decisions indoctrinate you in the first place. So, 
No, I made a choice. Like, I was not. Huh? I was not brought up as a Christian family. I w- I made a choice. I studied other religions. I studied other doctrines, and I made a choice. Then what led you to believe that the world is six thousand years old? That God created Adam and Eve? That there was a, that there was a flood? What, what led you to believe that that is actually true? When there's so much other information out there that can show you, that can demonstrate to you that that cannot be true. Give me an example. Can you give me an example? I'm sorry, um, you're, you're breaking up now, sir. I said, can you give me an example? Uh, of, of what? Of why Adam and Eve isn't true? Um, let me think. Oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, oh, how about evolution? And all the masses and masses of evidence from so many different social doctrines that, that support it. Well, I, you're breaking out. you got to give me some specific example or whatever. Okay, let me just talk about fossils first, okay? Fossils are, uh, are um, quite irrelevant, but if, you, if we are going to make it relevant, we got to find fossilized uh, immediate offspring of whatever the missing link or whatever the fossil we're talking we have, about. Uh, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. I, that, that, that argument may have been valid in the times of Darwin. There's so many intermediate fossils now. It's ridiculous. And to be honest with you, we don't even need... No, I'm need not talking about fossil. intermediate fossils. I'm talking about the uh, immediate offsprings of that so-called intermediate fossils. For example, you for example, that. for, for example, let's sorry. say if you're going I'm to... Not, I'm, uh, I'm not going to debate science with someone who doesn't understand it. It's pointless. Okay, um, let, me, let me explain to you I'm, I'm then drop, analogically. Drop, let me explain to you gonna, this analogically, no, 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 all right? I, 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 you know, I apologize not if you don't understand your question. It's kind of like, uh, you know, there are a lot of static noises. But if you're going to claim, uh, let's say, fossil Z is from fossil A, all right, then you, gotta, you, you have a lot of homework to do. Okay, what I'm saying, what, I, what I'm saying, guys, guys. Could you keep on the topic, free will? Try, try and keep on right. the topic, free will. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. What I'm saying... Well, I'm Okay, um, what I'm saying is that if you want to, like, assert that A, I mean, Z is from A or whatever, then and but showing P is not enough, or, or what it seems to be P. you gotta, you got to show me, like, you know, the immediate offspring, uh, like Q or, or other... You know, like, let's say you have, like, uh, 100 Zs and you have 100 A fossils, yet you have only one P, and, and you're making an assumption that Z is from A. That, that, that's not going to happen with me, because, you know, I need a lot more uh, evidence than that if you're going to claim that. And when I don't even have that, you know, how can I believe in the theory of evolution? Go ahead, Anthony. Can I ask you a question regarding what you told me the other day? You said you believe in speciation, correct? Speciation? Uh, yeah. Do I believe in speciation? Not really, yeah. because what is the de- what is the definition of species anyway? You know, it's it's not even a word. Yeah, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you I know. Don't. So, but uh, what I said, what I said is that I. Agree with like a certain macro evolution, but I'm I, yeah. I'm not going to like uh, I, I'm not I mean micro I'm not going to say like you know like you are from monkeys you know that's that's macro that's I'm not going to say that I cannot say that it has never been observed it's not scientific but as far as like some biggest change the Bible has never been observed I'm not it's talking not about scientific. the Bible empty just be calm man all right. When you have a skin pigment change and all that, you know, sure, with that kind of changes, due to adaptation, not because some kind of so-called evolution, you know, just because you have a skin color change, that doesn't mean you are not a human, all right? I've got the dictionary definition by your thick case. Speciation. Speciation is the finest evolutionary process of new biological species 
usually one species that divides into two or more species that are genetically unique. I know what it means. It's the, difference, but the difference between micro and macro is macro is, the period, is a particular period of time. So macro evolution is basically micro evolution over a period of time. That's where it is. That's the only difference. Well, well for me, you know, for, to my definition of speciation is the formation of new and distinct species in the course of evolution, okay? Now, the important yes. thing is the new and distinct. Just because you have color pigmentation change or you have a big development, that doesn't mean, <laughs> that, doesn't mean that you are different human, <laughs> right? Just be, let's say you have a mutation somehow in your body. Does that mean you are not human? You know, I mean, come on. You know, I, as I said... We speciated from monkeys, so we are uh, evolved. Species, you believe, as I define... You and you agree that speciation is a formation of new and distinct species, okay? Distinct. Yes, new information is added. Right, so I, I give an example about pigment changes or the, the uh, about a little uh, mic, uh, micro <laughs> evolutionary changes. That doesn't mean that macro is possible, right? Well, yeah, it is because it's been recorded well, that the Earth the is over four billion years old, and the Bible suggests it's six thousand years old. So for a period of four billion years old, uh, for, sorry, for, uh, four billion years, it is possible that we uh, po that we were able to evolve from right. to well, begin with yeah, RNA. I and all know. That. I know you believe that. I know you. Hey guys, know can you we uh, bring it back on uh, topic, please? Yeah. Just, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, we sure. could probably discuss this after the uh, debate in the uh, after show. Okay. I know indeed. I know that you you believe that you know, and I don't believe that though. It's just too uh, too much for me. <laughs> right. So, so go ahead about go ahead. Any, any more questions about the free will? Yeah. And you know the argument is like, hey, there is there is uh, suffering, so God is letting it. <laughs> Nothing is free will. So Hang on. now let's say can let me ask you a question. Can you be free within yourself? If you're going to be like just by yourself, is that can you be free actually within yourself? If God is in control, then I'm not free because he controls oh, everything. Every outcome I've gone over this. No, I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not talking about God here. Okay? I said right. you. You. Right. If you with yourself, are you free? Am I free? Right. For example, you're However. free to like to be naked, to do whatever you want. Da 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 da. Are you free? Free to that extent, yeah. But your God is responsible for what about I do. God, so. MP. Why are you just you have this thing about God, don't you? <laughs> See, yes or no, man? Yeah, but your thick shades. Can I just make this clear? If your God exists, He is responsible. For everything, because uh, he is omniscient, correct? Well, if, it is, and if he is, uh, if, it is, if he is responsible, he is, then he's going to explain to you later on. My question is: Are you going to be free yourself? Right. Can you let me finish, by you? Right. If God is responsible for everything and it can have an influence on everything, therefore he is responsible for a person's actions. And if he is responsible for the person's actions, he's responsible over their free will. So, only he has free will. I am not free if he exists. Well, it seems like you're making a lot of free choices right now, even. The thing is, as I asked, let's say there's no God, all right? And are you free yourself? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not free if your God exists. Oh, man. Oh, empty. I'm telling where, you. Where's your brain? Right. I said, if there's no God... All right. That's the. That, that. If I, if there is no God, then I am free. Okay, you are free if yourself. There is no God. I am. Free. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank there you. No now, if there is someone who loves you, uh, preferably a beautiful woman, totally in love with you, is she free with yourself? Is she free to feel that? Yeah. So like, so you guys are like one, huh? So you guys are free, huh? Sorry? So you guys are like one and you guys are like free, each other, right? Yeah. Same thing we got, man. 
No, it's not. Yes, it is. Basically, when you are God is listen, God is responsible for what you do. When you are in Christ, when you are with God, when you know the truth, you are truly free. Okay. So, because you think that that uh, there is no free will because there is no God for you. Yes. Six sheets. If God, as I've mentioned this time and time again. If God is exists, He is responsible for what we do and what we feel and what we think. Yeah, and He will be responsible. What about it? Yeah, which means we have no free will. I've said this consistently, and we just keep ignoring it. Oh well, if you know, responsibility, His responsibility has nothing to do with our free will, as does it? Because let's say, yes, it does. Okay, for example, you have created certain uh, certain certain sculpture okay it doesn't have any free will does it it doesn't move right it cannot move by Sorry, can, you can you repeat let's, that can you let's say you made a sculpture you created a sculpture right? right that sculpture doesn't have free will does it is it able to move? What what's its abilities? Well, the ability is just stand there. You, you, that's a sculpture. Right. So, can, can you agree with me that that sculpture doesn't have any free will? Well, it's, it doesn't. It hasn't got a conscience, so it doesn't possess free will. No. So, oh, okay. So here's another new word. So, conscious. So, how do you know it doesn't have conscious or subconscious? Sorry? How would you know that sculpture that you have created doesn't have any conscious or subconscious, whatever conscious that you want? Because it doesn't move, it doesn't it's live. It's a being, it's just there. You created it. Yeah, but it does not exist. It, uh, sorry, it does, it does exist, but it does not be conscious like we do. We are able to, you know, act do things. The sculptor can't. I see. So the analogy isn't valid. I see. So, so if it doesn't have the free will, so to say, then means like uh, you, we, we can fairly say that he, he's, he doesn't exist? It exists, yeah, but we don't, it doesn't have free will. So I guess, that, I guess God wants us to exist, huh? Yes. But he doesn't exactly have. He, he controls everything we do. So it, the analogy you just made, but there isn't valid <laughs> because it it can't move. It, it doesn't ex, it doesn't have a conscious to make choices. So comparing humans to a sculptor isn't valid. Well, it's, it's, you Try created and, it. You created any anyone could like blame you for that sculpture. It doesn't. It doesn't possess the same abilities as we do. So it's not valid. Yeah, it's, but it's your creation. Why can't why can't yeah, it why can't it do what others want? For example, dance or walk or I mean, why can't it do that? Because we haven't create we haven't given it the abilities to do that, which means we're in control of what it does. Same as God is in control of what we do. Oh, I see. So creation itself is not enough. Is that what you're saying? You gotta do certain Sorry? creation itself. Creating the sculpture is not enough, but we gotta do certain things so that it can have free will. What is that certain thing? Yeah. Uh, guys, I think we're offline. Yeah. Okay. See. Sorry, what's up? Oh, we're offline. That certain offline. thing no, is that existence. It's called life. Thick God, shades. We're offline. God wants Stop. to give you life. Thick mm -hmm. shades. We're offline. We're offline. I said I don't care about it, man. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, you're on topic. It goes on and off the line, and I notice because of some technical issues or something. But you know, it's not going to bother what I say, <laughs> or I don't. I don't notice that. I'm not looking at that. But anyway, how long have you been off? <laughs> okay, I think okay, we're back. Uh, back. We're back. Then. Brilliant. Yeah. All right. Here's my question. All right. So basically, if this guy wants us to know that he exists, but he just doesn't spill it for our friends, even if we're still in the womb, and then basically we want to have all these other religions, all these other things, we want to do mission. We want to do missionary work, for example. It doesn't make sense. Wow. Oh, 
I'm sorry. sorry. That's really bad <laughs> there. Um, if you can type, that might be better. So I can read it. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to adjust the volume. Yeah, can anybody, like, uh, heard his question? If you can type for me, I'll appreciate it. Yeah. Casey, maybe we can hear you. Right, can you hear me now? A little bit. It's getting right. better. I just want to ask one question. <laughs> basically, once you can know he exists, and basically, if you deny his existence, you're basically going to go uh, have a free ticket with some pastel. Then why couldn't he just commit and spill his existence into people's brains while they're in the womb or something? I cannot make it out. <laughs> I, can't, I can't make it out. Okay, I'll just type. me. Type your question. I think it's better to type it. You know, take your time and type it. Yeah, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Can we have a little break or something? Yeah, go, all those are non non biblical, you know. <laughs> all those are non biblical. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you know, but you're, you're connecting religion to wrong. No, I'm yeah. just, Well, you know, maybe the some teachings are are, are wrong, but the uh, religion itself is not necessarily wrong. I mean, you know, you you gotten that information from some areas from some people. So I'm saying that information or that person is not biblical. So you're saying, boy, by the way, what kind of a denomination are you in? I'm not in denomination. Uh, because the reason why is I hear many different words, so basically for one that you, uh, we're basically there, the absence of God, whatever that means. And then there's the one Sorry, that has to believe. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Well. Where I will be. Where I have the fiery poker hitting my butt if I don't. Alright, I can see that cheap type and that I can't hear you. Now. But I guess I could. I guess I will type. If that makes you happy. Put it there. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know if you can. Uh, sorry, I, 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 I wasn't able to hear you fully. I cannot respond to you. Alright, there's got another caller, so I'm going to have to drop. So anyway, the hell doctrine is, um, you know, as far as hell, eternal hell is concerned, in order for you, anybody to live in hell, you have to be living. <laughs> you have to have life. And, uh, you know, the wages of sin is death. It's just death. That's it. And th there is a so-called the second death, and that is eternal, uh, eternal lights out. And that doesn't mean that eternal torment. Um, so, let's see, Mark 9, 4, yeah, it's, it's, see, I, yeah, that's the, that's the thing, that's the thing. Uh, if you foot causes you to sin, cut it off, it's better to enter eternal life, you don't, see, that's the thing about the Bible, isn't it? You know, a lot of translations are, are translated in a different way. For example, in Mark 9, when it's, when hell is used, it's referring to Gehenna. It's just a little place outside uh, Jerusalem. Uh, it's like a dumb place, okay? It's not like the hell. And also, um, it says to better to have eternal life than thrown, thrown to be in hell. It doesn't say you're going to have eternal life in hell, okay? Or it doesn't say you're going to have eternal torment in hell. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, uh, do you want to bring the next call up? Okay, this is going to be our last call, and then we're just going to finish up with, um, with just uh, three minutes. Uh, just sorry, close up. Hey, can everybody hear me? Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Um. So I was going to ask a question to uh, Big Shades, but he doesn't believe in hell, so I have to rephrase the oh, question. Oh, I believe that I was in going. hell. There is hell, and you know I've been there too. I had a little taste of hell too. What I'm saying is that there is no such a thing as eternal hell. Eternal. There is no such thing as eternal hell, nor there is such thing as eternal tor torment in hell. Okay, could you describe hell real quick? Well, as far as my experience is concerned. Um, it was like, it, 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 I don't know, it felt like uh, a computer being shut, uh, shut off. It's like total energy, energy being deprived. You're, you can feel your life draining away, yet you, you are aware of it, but you cannot really voice that. And there's, it's like total desolate, total destitution, you know. Okay, so it's nothing. I'm sorry? You're somehow experiencing nothing. Yeah, I had a little taste of that. And also, okay. uh, also uh, had... That's, that's fine. I understand a lot of people have these near-death experiences where they think they are experiencing something like hell or heaven. I get it. People do this all the time. Um, what, I, what I'm going to ask you then, if you do you think... Well, that's a preliminary question I'm going to have to ask is, do you think that people uh, go to hell for... You know, I think the problem is, I think the problem is the uh, trolling with logic. <laughs> I think you should m mute the mic while others are talking because they're uh, constant noise and being, you know, in and out. So I cannot really hear others. Can you repeat that? Okay, that's better. All right, qu the question, can you repeat the question? Do you think that God sends people to hell for sending? Do, do I think God sent people to hell? Is that your question? Um, not hell is in an actual place, but this whole oblivion thing. Do you think people experience this oblivion thing for sending? For what? For sinning. For sinning. Well, that's what the Bible says. The, the, okay. The wage, no, 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 no. The Bible says the wage... The wage of sin is death. Death. It doesn't say the wage. I got you. The wage of sin is I got you. hell. Yeah, I've read the Bible. <laughs> I'm with you. Right. I'm with you. I read the Bible. I got you. Okay. I, I was asking preliminary questions because you have some beliefs that don't mesh with everything that I've ever heard from every Christian. So it's just asking questions to get a good picture here. Uh, so you believe that people experience hell due to sin. Uh, do you believe that being an atheist is a sin? Well, I don't think, I don't think, unless you know there is God, yet you claim to be an atheist. But being an atheist, really genuinely being skeptic, uh, I doubt it. Because uh, I can say, it's, you know, it's, certain atheists are foolish. For not believing in God, but I cannot say that is sin. Now, if you're going to, let's say, based on your uh, knowledge of God, uh, meaning there is no God, and if you assault, assert that assertion, uh, saying there is no God, then you got to provide how you'd know, how you just know that God doesn't exist. If you cannot provide that, then you cannot really be an atheist. Now, take, take shades. Let's make this clear. The burden of proof is on you. You are making the claim. You've got to prove that your God exists. Your specific one out of the thousands that have been portrayed. You are in a negative position. Well, I've heard you've that got so many times from evidence. everybody. And the thing is, we're talking about um, someone saying that 
atheists are sinners or not. Okay, I'm not saying my evidence overrules yours, or my to, or I'm not saying to believe my evidence as yours. Everyone, including you, has different or could have different evidence of God, because the relationship with God is quite personal. So no, no, no. Shades, thick shades. That's not how evidence works. Evidence is empirical. Evidence is demonstrable. Evidence uh, reflects objective reality. But I want to get off that topic and get back onto what I was going to ask you because we're diverging from what I was going to say. Okay, go ahead. Hello. Actually, I need. I need. Am I missing the question, or so what's happening? What's, what's happening? <laughs> oh, he's <tough>. oh. <sighs> so I guess he's gonna come back. So empty, man. What got you so angry, man? Eh? I'm not angry. I'm just uh, trying to get some points out because I, uh, you don't seem to be answering many questions. You keep preferring the Bible and subjective information. Yeah, well, but you, 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 well, your, when you, you say, said your relationship with God uh -huh. is entirely personal, so subjective to the individual, so it makes it subjective, not objective. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> unless you believe me. Hang on. Can you repeat that? I remain subjective. Well, I, re I will remain subjective unless you believe me. Hang on, take it back. I said I will. Uh, I will re remain oh, being. Turn it off nine, guys. I said I will remain being. Nine. I will remain being subjective. Oh, the large P. As long as you don't believe me. I mean, if you believe me, if you if you believe me, let's say I'm a very believable person. Let's say you believe me. And I say certain things, let's say, it doesn't have to do with God experience, it doesn't have to do with anything. And I share something, some story with you, and, and saying that actually happened to me, and you do believe me as a best friend or whatever, would you not believe what I say? Again, Shades, you need to provide evidence of the, uh, the well, fact that the actual that's a story That's place. a different thing, and also I didn't assert that God exists. God exists. I never did done yes, that. You right? did. And also, as I said, as I said, as much as you say that it is my burden, it is your also burden. But we are talking about as an atheist. So I've got to prove that, the, that your story didn't happen. How am I supposed to prove that? You're in a bit of proof. No, you are making no, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying to disprove any Bible. Let's say, let's say you have certain evidence to disprove God. Then you got to present it. Let's say, uh, let certain things make you believe that there is no God. Present it, so we can compare and you know discuss. Uh, but same as your assertion needs backing, as much as mine. But I have, I have my evidence. And whether you can accept my evidence or not is up to you. All right? That doesn't mean that, hold on. That doesn't mean my evidences are invalid. It means you cannot accept mine as valid. Thick shades. Mm -hmm. You did just uh, concede to the fact that your evidence is subjective to your personal experience, meaning that I won't be able to understand it because I'm not you, and you interpret things very different by comparison. Well, then we can discuss what that difference is. You know, we don't round things off. For example, the Bible. You know, I I cannot really give you and and dig up some bone who actually written it, and I cannot really scientifically scientifically prove going through his brain whether he was he had written it with his own inspiration or uh, from the inspiration of God. You, I cannot prove that. What I can prove is that there is the Bible. So. If there is a Bible, you know, let's talk about how they come about and you know, what's in it, you know. If you don't want that, we talk about our thing, which is my, like, born-again experience. If you don't want that personal uh, evidence, forget that. And I can talk about the visions. If you don't, talk, if you don't want to talk about the, uh, 
the visions, whatever, that's fine. If you don't want to accept that, that's fine. It's up to you. And we can talk about the, all the things around, around us, the mountain, or all the sky, the proof of God. If you don't accept that, that's your choice. Could you try to be a little bit more clear? I didn't understand that entirely. Well, basically, but, you, uh, okay, well, bottom line is that uh, whatever, the pres whatever the evidence that presented to you may or may not be evidence for you, but it may be for others, okay? That doesn't mean that my evidence is invalid. Well, it doesn't mean that we should be persuaded to your evidence. No, no, I, not as I said, it's what? your choice. It's your choice. You may be persuaded. It's choice. You may be, you may be persuaded because I'm your best friend, or you may not because you hate me. All right. But the message. I don't I'm, hate. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm just saying. I'm, what I'm saying is, if you cannot trust the messenger, then at least review the message. Take shade. Mm -hmm. To, to claim that you're like the messenger of God, you would need to actually present that there is a God, and if you haven't got any evidence to support that there is a God, that he's omniscient, this and that, and blah, blah, then I have no, no, right, no so choice I, but I, to deny I it, simply you, because you, you don't have evidence. the evidence I told, you, I told you my evidence, a, and if you cannot accept it's it... It's a personal experience, that's it. Well, let's, well, like let's I say, for example, I the Bible, say, I saw right? the, the Is the Bible personal experience? Is the Bible personal experience? People have visions, and that, that actually, and also there is a difference between visions and delusions. Uh, and people have visions that, uh, all the time. They have dreams all the time. And they're very, uh, a lot of them are crappy, but uh, many, many are, they relate to that. All right? I mean, <laughs> is that not true? Is, is it not true that they have dream? Whether you accept that or not is up to you. I keep telling you. Don't blame the messenger. It's, a, it's you. Use your free will. Um, oh, six shades. We've gone over this. God is responsible for everything that happens. Therefore, that's, we don't have free will. That's, that's what you want to assert. Exists. That's six what you're sure. asserting. I heard this. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Not, I'm not asserting. This is this is just pure fact. If he is in control of everything, our free will and everything that we do, therefore, he is responsible for what happens. And we don't, we don't have free will to see as responsible for the event happening. As I said, controlling is not the only thing involved in free will. You gotta talk <clears> about <throat> obstruction, you gotta talk about constraining, you gotta talk about affecting. Okay? It's not just about controlling, it's also, is God controlling your free will? If yes, yes. is, yes. is God obstruct, obstructing your free will? Yes. If so, it's responsible okay. for events. Is God constraining your free will? Yes. Is God affect? Okay, guys. Is, 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 is God affecting your free will? Yeah, he's responsible for everything. He's, he, as I mentioned before, the key well, word then is why are you here? because the omniscient. Because he okay, guys, I'm gonna have to ask <laughs> you to uh, do your three-minute wrap-up. The three minutes for each of you guys to just do a little wrap up as we're coming to the end of the uh, debate. Make sure you go first. Well, as I said from the beginning, you got you got to be able to answer you know all these things that I asked you. And if it is yes, then you know, then why are you here? Okay. Um, you know, you made a choice to be here. You made a choice that to uh, to debate or uh, to put responsibility. Uh, onto God about your free will. For example, like I kill someone because it is free will given by God. All right, that's God doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, God is absence of evil, and He may create evil. That doesn't mean that He is evil. It is up to us to choose. Just like Adam and Eve, seeing that the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If your will is not towards God. Does that mean you have no free will? Obviously, your will, Inti's will, is not towards God. And therefore, therefore, I mean, Inti is saying that he has a free will by actually being here even. Did God send him? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But he made a choice. He made a conscious choice to be here and speak against God. 
you know? And that is because, as I said, you don't know really what the truth is. And I'm not claiming that I know the truth, and I'm not, claim I'm not saying that you should know the truth. All I'm saying is whether whatever it is true or not, as I've given you an example of you and your girlfriend, that how you can be free within each other is when you are actually in one with love. Okay? So that's why, that's what you have to do. If you truly, truly be free, then you gotta be, you got to be in God, you got to be in Christ. Otherwise, yes, you are right. Without Christ, without God, we are not really free. We are in bondage. And that's not God's responsibility, by the way. It is us have gotten all the way here. So do something, let's do something about it. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, so I'm just going to restart the time and empty, you can go now. Okay, well, as you may have already noticed, Thick Shade has been really inconsistent and as you've been using uh, false analogies and his analogies simply aren't valid, he's been comparing a human to a sculptor when a sculptor's abilities are entirely different, which means that it's entirely not valid. And and the point that I've been making throughout this debate that is consistently not answered is the fact that if God is responsible for everything that we do and everything that has been created, therefore he is in control of it and is in control of our free will, therefore we don't have free will. You did concede earlier in the part in the partway in the debate that there is the free will. God is in control of everything. He hasn't given us free will, he's responsible for everything. And this is the last example I'd like to give. If God created evil, but isn't evil, so if I were responsible for a certain event, like say for instance, uh, if I if I were to kill someone and say, oh, I, I didn't, I, I I caused evil, but I wasn't responsible for it, how would that put, uh, be put up in court? then if I were to kill someone and say, oh, I'm not responsible for it, and that's just complete crap. But the end, if God is responsible for causing a certain bad event, He is evil. He is bad for the but he is caught. So, God is evil because the event. And I would be evil if I were to kill someone. Same as God. If I would happen. So, in, high, in a nutshell, we don't have free will if your God exists. I am here simply because there isn't a God. I am here because I have chosen, not God. I have not been communicated by any other deity or anything like that. So I am here because of myself and not your God. Therefore, your God cannot exist. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, okay, so that's the end of the debate. I'd like to I'd like to thank both our participants for uh, taking their time to uh, come on uh, the show and. Get a good debate. So, at the, make sure to check out their channels on YouTube. Um. Well, thank you for for inviting uh, me, and um, I hope that you guys have a good day or evening wherever you are. <laughs> if you have any other questions, I have other videos, and I, I want to take a, uh, the moment to advertise my YouTube channel. Uh, Thick Shades uh, had been a long time ago uh, been uh, terminated so <laughs> because, uh, because uh, some people believe that I'm very thick but my new channel is Thick Shades Zero so, or you can just type thickshades.com right. you, you can get to me hey. Thank you Okay, so we're going to take a five-minute break, and then we're coming back with the after show. Make sure to check, oh. tune in for that. So th that will be great, great fun, I hope. <laughs> yeah. So I'll see you guys in five minutes. Am I invited? Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to grab a couple.